Hey guys, it's Dan and it is time for another book review. This time I'm here to review Dark Harvest by Norman Partridge. This is a tour horror and I have to say, um, I may have seen this floating around booktube before, but I never really paid attention to it and it wasn't until I heard the podcast uh, from Staring Into the Abyss talking about this book that I was really intrigued. And I'm going to throw it out there before you guys go check out that podcast discussing this book. It's very spoilery. Um, every podcast where they talk about a book, it's always full of spoilers. So if you have not read the book that they're discussing, you might want to consider that before you listen because they are very spoiler. Um, they are very much a discussion podcast. They discuss the things they have read. I tend to only listen to the episodes of books I've already read, or if it's some obscure thing that I know I'm not going to read for a very long time, then I'll listen to it. But enough of that, let's get into this book. Um, this is a little novella. It was only like, um, was it 163 pages, I think? It was 169 pages. But anyways, this takes in a no-name small town in Midwest, and it's... 1963 it's Halloween and they have this event that they have every Halloween and what happens is they have this this creature which is kind of like on the cover here this pumpkin head comes out they call him the October boy or old hawk hacksaw face or sawtooth jack and basically, it's kind of like Shirley Jackson's The Lottery. They, these teenage boys, once you hit the age of 16, you have to go out and participate in this Halloween run. And what the mission, what the goal is, is one of these teenage boys has to kill the pumpkin head October boy before he reaches the church in the center of the town by midnight. Really interesting concept. I mean, I thought this was more interesting than Shirley Jackson's The Lottery because this whole event kind of benefits this town. It's like their harvest festival. Like the town cannot prosper and keep going on without this sacrificial kind of Hunger Games kind of uh, event. And that's another thing. Speaking of hunger... Um, these boys, they're confined to their bedrooms for five days with no food. And um, I love the way this is written. It's really kind of gritty. And um, I kind of, I like this quote. It's on my, um, I saved it to my Goodreads. I think I tweeted it out. But it was something basically how he had only had orange juice that tasted stale at freezer burn and it couldn't get rid of like all the things he was thinking about. So I, I didn't I don't have it earmarked in here and maybe I'll put it down below so you guys will have that quote exactly so you know what it is. But yeah, just the way um this is worded is really, really good. If you're a fan of like pulp fiction, um Norman Partridge really writes kinda like those old pulp masters. And um I had read the book he written The Crow Wicked Prayer and in there, he discussed some of his um, his writing influences. And Ambrose Bierce was one of those. And if you're not into that kind of writing, like that classic kind of literature, like kind of gritty kind of like crime fiction or westerns, you may not like this. I know there were a few people I saw that I'm friends with on Goodreads who just did not like this. Um, majority of people I know really, really enjoyed this. There's not too much I can say about it without spoiling it, though. That's the thing, because it was so short. Um, it is very, very nerve-wracking, kind of action-packed. It's like, there's a lot of stuff going on in here. There's a lot of stuff to unpack. When you get to about the climax of the book, you find that you kind of really discover what's really going on. What the hidden story is behind the October boy, like the meaning of him, what he is, and what he symbolizes. And just the ending of this was really, really over the top great. Um, I really enjoyed this. This is a great Halloween read. If you have not read it, but it's something you've been meaning to read, you need to rush out there and get this. 
Um, it really sucks that Norman Partridge isn't writing anymore, and I wish he was. So, we, I want to get this guy back out of retirement. I think he should be writing books again. So go check out this book. Um, I gave this a 5 out of 5 star rating on Goodreads. I, there's so many, like, authors have commented, like, Stephen King says, a major new talent, and, um, you know, people like Peter Straub were like, oh, this wonderful writer offers challenges, surprises, and deep satisfactions to anyone willing to think about what they are reading. And I want to give you a little bit of an example of some of the writing. I'm going to read you a passage from this, so you can see what I'm talking about, like, this so... The prose is written so well. Um, this is just a random passage, but it's uh, ahead of them. The October boy walks slowly down the aisle. He's unsteady but holding on, his left hand catching the end caps of oak pews as he advances from one row to the next. Ribbons of moonlight spill through narrow stained glass windows, falling like bars across his path. They're the color of blood and bruises, and the boy wades through them, his battered head dipping on that braided vine neck. Light from the lightning bolt crack flashing through the stained murk like a yellow knife. Just stuff like that is just so gripping and so gritty. Um, I could easily, I, I definitely think this should be a film. And I don't know why this has not been turned into a film yet. But I would so love to see this. Because the writing and the way it's written is so very cinematic. You could just really envision every scene. Um, it made it really enjoyable. I love his descriptors of different scenes, and it's kind of... Um, someone else had compared it to lowbrow. It is very lowbrow at times. It's not like... It's not like, you know, Moby Dick or something like that, but it's Fear Every Man. And like I said, I really, really enjoyed this. I think I might go check out some of his other works. Uh, maybe he has some short stories that I might enjoy reading. I'll have to go and look at his catalog and see what other stuff he's written. I know he has written a couple of crime fiction books. And like I said, you know, go buy this book. We need to get this guy out of retirement. I don't know why he stopped writing. But, you know, he was ahead of his time, I guess, and Tor saw something in him that they, you know, a big publishing house, like, decided to publish this guy. That says a lot. Um, for those of you in the U.S., I will have a link to Amazon for you to pick this up. And for those of you international folks, I will have bookshop.org links. Uh, I'm also going to throw down my coffee link if you don't mind donating a dollar or two to help support my channel. I'm not receiving AdSense, and every little bit helps out. That's all I got for you guys. Like I said, great, fantastic Halloween read. I definitely wanted to read this before before Halloween because, you know, I, I, I heard about it in that Staring Into the Abyss podcast, and, and they were right on. This is a great book, something well worthwhile checking out. Um, but if you came here looking for horror book recommendations and reviews, please hit that subscriber button. While you're there, hit that notification bell so you're well aware of when I upload again. That's all I got for you guys. Stay healthy, stay sane, and be good to each other.